Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-age dating. And today I have an interesting proposition for you, and it is that dating itself has failed us. At least for us middle-aged women, dating as a concept has failed. Now, originally, dating was courtship, and it was designed to lead to marriage. So if a man promised more than he offered or became overly forward and did not provide marriage, a woman could sue him for breach of promise. Her reputation was at stake. That or her male relatives could just come after the guy with pitchforks. That, that probably happened, too. But relationships today are amorphous. In fact, there's that ugly word I learned, situationship, which means it's like kind of dating, but nobody really knows what it is. And there might be commitment, but yeah, you know, nobody's really sure. So it's kind of like one of those jello molds. And it has, you know, delicious little marshmallows in it, but maybe sometimes those icky jalapeno flavored jelly beans that you don't really want. And you're sort of eating this jello mold and, and you don't know what's there. Uh, dating has spawned so many ugly terms these days. We've got ghosting, right? Where you're sleeping with someone and they just vanish. There's paper clipping, where they come back into your life to see if you might be available for something very brief. And then there's ponytail uh, pulling, where they're just antagonistic. And yes, I made that third one up. I did. But the real problem, seriously, is that it isn't that our dates are more than friends. It's that we treat them as so much less than friends. To me, middle-aged dating these days, at least when I've interacted with so many men, the theme is what can they get away with? How little can they offer yet still have some kind of physical relationship? Modernity has become being modern is like some kind of social, socially sanctioned laziness. And it's also carelessness and callousness. I'm unpopular in my writing on this, but I think our date should care about us. You want to sleep with someone? You care about them. Did they get home safe? Are they hungry? How are they? This should be more than a pit stop, more than a bite of said jalapeno flavored jelly bean. We treat our friends so much better than we treat our dates. We have accountability to them. We expect to see them again. A date you just get rid of, but a friend you're not going to ghost because they'll wonder what happened. You're not going to try to talk them into bed because you value their friendship outside of any kind of physical situation. You want to keep them in your life and it makes you treat people so much better. I mean, accepting people for who they are and as friends, it might not lead to love, but it does lead to better human relationships. You know, I, I've been reading a lot about dating sites where they say that they're very difficult because so many people go after the few quality people, but the quality people are sometimes defined by appearance and flashy jobs and being really physically fit. And, you know, I know plenty of those alleged quality people who are perennially single. Whereas I know a lot of unremarkable looking middle-aged people who have found love in long-term relationships. And it's two things. One, they have smiles. They usually have lovely radiant smiles, which to me means that they've been open to a real committed relationship. But secondly, and this is the most important, they know the truth, that quality isn't measured by exterior success. Quality is measured by the way that we treat other people. One more time, quality isn't based on your income. It's based on how you treat other people. And in that way, that's why I really think we need to demand more quality, just not on the outside, on the inside, through compassion and kindness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna relate this to hiking. I'm, I'm a big hiker, I hike a lot. Let me tell you a couple of stories. After the pandemic, we all started hiking again in groups. And on one of the hikes, uh, this woman fell, she hurt her back, it was real slippery, and she needed help to walk back to the camp. It, it did not camp to the trailhead at the end of the day. And on another hike, a, a woman joined the hike and it wasn't even that hard, but she couldn't make it up the high hills. She just wasn't in shape for it. And in both of those hikes, men who were more experienced hikers stayed behind and helped these women get home safely. They helped them get returned. 
And this sacrificed, you know, their schedules, it sacrificed their own hikes at whatever pace they wanted to hike, but they were compassionate. And that's outside the dating arena. Now, I haven't seen a heck of a lot of that in the men I've dated. In fact, I discovered that my personal safety to a man I dated, a rich man, by the way, was worth $20. And that came up when I went out with him on a date in the city. I, my car was parked at the uh, train station in the suburbs. He told me I, the date would end at a certain time. It didn't. It went on much longer than planned. He begged me to stay. I said, well, okay, but I've got to get home safely. You know, I've got to make sure I can get back. He said, yeah, I'll make sure you're safe. It's okay. And then I discovered that his idea of making sure that I got home safely was dropping me at a deserted station, the, the train station that happened to be near uh, his house. Not, not, not where my car was, no, an hour and a half from my car. This, this was his idea of my being safe. Okay, I didn't know him that well. Without complaint, I called an Uber. It was going to be $45. Great. And he said, oh, is it really worth that price? I said, yeah, to me, $40, well worth my safety. Yep, bargain. He thought about it, you know, looked around the rooms of his multi-million dollar house, peeled out a 20, and looked like I should just be beyond grateful. You don't get that in the hiking world. One more hiking story, I'm done. You know, the other week I was talking with a girlfriend on the trail and this guy comes up and he's a little oblivious that we're talking, but he's up, he's chatty, he's pleasant enough. And then there's a woman kind of stranded on a real um, narrow downhill with a lot of um, chafe uh, leaves and things. And she was scared. And I watched, he reached out, his, he stopped, he reached out his arm. He very kindly helped her to safety very carefully. And you know, I, I was afraid to do that. I thought I'd fall myself. I don't have such good footing. I said, well, that's really nice. He said, well, I just don't want anybody to fall. And in that moment, I knew that was a quality person. I think that us women may have to go Lissa Strada on this situation. Lissa Strada is the uh, story of, a, of two warring uh, factions in ancient Greece, two groups of men who were fighting. And their wives got together and decided, well, actually, Lysistrata led the wives. She gathered the wives, and uh, she proposed that everybody withhold sex until these guys stopped fighting, until the two factions ceased. And they did, and the wives did, and the men grumbled, but eventually they ended their battle. And I feel that we need to do that. Hold off until you know, is this someone you trust? Is this someone you like? Is this someone who cares about when, you know, when you're not texting for the evening? Is this someone who checks in on you? I mean, in short, is this somebody you trust that you see a potential future with? And I think the best way to do that is to look at friendship as the foundation for our human relationships. I mean, I'm sorry, dating has autoerotically asphyxiated itself. It's a disaster. So I think we need to start with friendship and see what grows from there. I'm Debbie, and I hope this helped navigate the dread cesspool of middle-aged dating. I'll see you next time. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.